In this video, I'll show you how I made my own hand-drawn character into these by using AI software to supercharge your custom-made characters. This helps to quickly put your character in different poses, get character consistency for storytelling and much more, all in a few simple steps. But first, let me show you how to do it. Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to show you my own custom made character that I hand drawn myself and then through software I digitized it and then use AI to get the character to do whatever I want. So to start off we need a character. I've already drawn out my character and I broke it up into poses. As you can see I've drawn out the legs, the body and the head. The heads have different expressions, the body and legs have different poses on them. The reason I broke them up is because we need as many poses as possible for the AI training model. Because I've broken them up, I'm able to mix and match them into different poses to get a good range to train the AI model with. Then I traced over the pencil markings with an ink pen just to create a nice bold outline. Now you want the bold outlines as when we run it through some filters on some free software I'm going to show you, you'll easily be able to select those parts and color them in. And then all you want to do is take a photo of these sketches and then upload them to your computer. You don't have to draw your character out with a pencil if you've got an iPad or a tablet. I'm just showing you a method that I feel like is approachable to most people. Now I've got all of my parts sketched out, inked in. Now there are a few ways to go about the next step. If you have Adobe Illustrator, there's a simple way to turn your line drawing into a vectorized image. And as you can see here, I've uploaded the head of my character. His name is George. And you can see there is a button here called Image Trace. And if I click that, just click OK. There, like magic, it's taken away that kind of paper from the background. It's noticed the black ink lines and turns that into a vector. If you don't have Adobe Illustrator, I'll show you a free alternative. This is a great website. It's called Photopea and it's pretty much a free alternative to Photoshop. What I like to do is run it through a few different steps as then you will be able to color it in. So if I load in that image of the head, so first I go into exposure and raise that. And as you can see, that texture of the paper is gone. And then I take down the gamma correction. And then I go into levels and I move this black slider up here. And then I go to posterize and take it down to two levels. So that's pretty much just black and white. And then I go to image and vectorize bitmap. Change that color value to two, make sure it's set at cartoon and click OK. And you'll notice there are a few different paths on this right hand side. I like to select them all, right click, and then flatten image. And now the image is free to color in. So as you can see, I've selected the paint bucket tool here. And if I click on George's face, there you go, it's colored it in. And because it's got that nice ink outline, as long as there's no gaps, it will fill in that shape. And you can see the eyebrows here, click them. Just make sure to select your color here. Then if I do his hair, and there you go, it's as easy as that. So we've gone from a black and white sketch to a color digital version of our character, and it wasn't that hard. You might want to add a bit more depth into the color of the character. So what I like to do is I normally get the magic wand tool and I select the area that I want to color in or add some detail to. I'll select the color of his face again, and I'll just make a darker color just to add some depth to it. Now you can come to the brush here and you can start to add some shadow. See there, adding shadow to the ear. If you have a tablet with a pen like I've got here, then I would say to use that, but you can use the mouse. It's no problem at all. As you can see, just adding a bit of shading or shadow to him just makes the character stand out a bit more. And then what you want to do is just continue with this method across all the different parts of the character you've created. It can take a little bit of time, but it's well worth it. Once you've done one, it shouldn't take as long to do the others. 
as you can see, I've colored in all of the parts to my character. So I've got his heads, the different leg poses, and the different body poses. What you have to do now is mix and match them to create all the different poses. So I've mixed some of the body parts up and I think it looks really good. So I can go and save this image and I'll make a bunch more. I would say it's best to create at least 15 different poses. Also, make sure to save some images just of your character heads. It just helps with the AI learning what the character face looks like. And then once you've made them all, remove the white backdrop by either disabling the background layer or going in and deleting all of the background. And then export out as a PNG file. Make sure to save your character with an image size with these dimensions, as it works best with the AI training model. I have made another video using a similar method to this one, but with pre-made characters I found online. So if you would like to check out that video, I've left a link for it in the description box below. The AI software we're going to use to train your character model is called LensGo. There is a free version of LensGo that you can use, and I believe they allow you to train up to three different models, and you get some daily tokens to use. There are loads of features on this website, but we're going to focus on the training and models feature. So click on that, and you can see all the other characters I've made. You just have to click on new model. Make sure if it's a cartoon looking character to click on anime, and then you name your model here. Drag in all of the poses that you've made. You can add up to 100 images if you really want to fine tune your model. Now, this can take up to 25 minutes, but it could be shorter as well. I'm going to use another model that I've used with the exact same images. You can create videos with your character as well, but I'm going to focus on images. So click on image. As you can see, there is the model here on the top left. If you click that, you can see all your other models. And here is a model strength slider. Its default is at 0.65, which I find is a good level to be at. And here are your image dimensions, the number of images you want to generate, the text guidance scale, and there are some other options down here, along with the negative prompt. All right, so let's start off with a simple prompt. I've put a boy sitting on a park bench. He looks happy. And it's done a pretty good job. The character looks like our character. He's sitting on a park bench. I'll show you a tip soon on where we're going to cut out this character and put him in different environments, just if you can't quite get the environment right in the prompt. Now let's try a prompt, but with a different expression and to try and get more of the environment in the image, as the park bench one had just a white backdrop. So I've gone for inside an office, a boy sitting at his desk is holding a pen and looking sad, and then reiterated inside an office at the end again as sometimes it needs just a bit more reinforcement on what the location is. And these look a lot better. The first image, he is just sitting down and it does have that white background, but that's not the end of the world as we can cut him out and put him inside an office environment if we want to. And here he is, he's holding the pen, he looks sad, so it's done exactly what we told it. And here he is inside an office and all of them still look like the character. And here are a few different images I've created. I got my character to play soccer, play a game of basketball, and he's learning to play the guitar. And for this prompt, all I wrote in was rowing a boat. So that just shows you, you don't always have to write in a detailed prompt to get some good results. Now I want to show you how to get a separate character and environment and put them together so you can get the perfect location and the perfect pose of your character together. If I look back at the character sitting on a park bench, I want to cut him out and put him inside a park environment. So you can download that image. And now I'm going to create a park. So I've put in the prompt a peaceful park with a path. And I've chosen an aspect ratio of 16 by nine for this one. I really like this image, so I'm going to download that one. I've opened up both images inside of Photop. So I've got the landscape and the character. So to get rid of the background, I just select it with the magic wand tool and click delete. 
and then select and copy. And then we'll paste that character in. And now our character is sitting in the park. You can add some details to make it look like the character is actually in the environment. As sometimes they stand out as they just look like they've been pasted in there. So to do that, I like to add a new layer and put that in between the character and the environment. So you can add some shadows under the character. And you can also go onto the layers themselves and use the burn tool. And then you can upscale your images using this website, which is iloveimg.com, and then go to the more tools and upscale. You can upscale your image two or four times. It's done a great job at upscaling that image. This just allows you to create your custom scenes much easier as now you've got your own custom character trained up so you can prompt them to do anything and you can create your own environments. This is the perfect combination for storytelling and much more. Okay, so we've reached the end of this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it and I hope it's inspired you to create your own characters and get them trained up using AI. It's pretty incredible. Feel free to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Please comment below with any tips and tricks you want to share. And check out one of our other videos. We made an awesome video covering character consistency. To check that out, click on the image you can see on your screen right now. You won't want to miss it.